أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله all praises to Allah. We seek his aid and his assistance and ask his forgiveness. And we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of our own selves and from the evil of our actions. Whomever Allah guides, no one will be able to mislead him. Whomever he leads astray, nobody can guide him. I testify that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah, alone without partner, and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and messenger. Rabbi shrahli sodri wa yassilli amri wahlul uqtatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. O my Lord, open my chest and ease my task for me. Remove the impediment from my speech so that they may understand what I say. So a very warm welcome to you sisters, Jazak Khair, for joining us um, on this blessed day of the 6th Dhul Hijjah, 6th, am I right? 7th, 8th, 9th, yeah, 6th, subhanAllah. They go so quickly, subhanAllah. Um, and as you're all aware, during these blessed days, we're um, doing our 99 Names of Allah series, covering the most beautiful names and attributes of Allah during the blessed days of Dhul Hijjah. And today's name, as you can see on your screen, is An Nasir. And so what I want to, to ask first and foremost is, um, is everybody aware of this name? Do you know what it means? Um, what, does, what comes up for you when you think of this name? Um, People may be familiar with it because of uh, the the surah um, and Nasr. So let's see if we've got any comments in the chat box. I found recently that everybody's really um, maybe away from their devices or just listening or multitasking or tired. Everybody's a bit quiet these days on the chat box. <laughs> Subhanallah, which is fine. Um, so an Nasr. Um, is is the, it can be loosely translated as the helper it can be the helper or um and what a lot of people remember from this name is the surah an nasr which talks about the help or it tr talks about the victory so allah calls himself an nasr which means the helper and this name um, appears in the Quran five times. And Nasr is the one who helps and supports his slaves. Now, one of the reasons I um, pick uh, the names that I do is because I really want the names to impact our lives and really help us in our day to day. And subhanAllah, what better name to reflect on the name and attribute of Allah, where he talks about how he is known as the helper and the supporter. SubhanAllah. Because quite often, my sisters, what I find when I talk to others and even myself is that we have this need of help. We, f we need the f uh, the, to feel supported. We need to feel aided, right? And that's what gives us strength. It gives us courage to carry on. It makes us feel supported. And when we are made to feel supported, we actually get more done. Have you ever noticed that? That when you know that support is behind you, you actually feel like you can get more done. SubhanAllah. So isn't it wonderful that Allah has this beautiful name and attribute of an nasr He is the one who backs, who strengthens, who defends, and who aids the believers. And there is no other helper but him. And even if we receive the help of someone, 
we have to know that that help truly came from him. It may look like it's coming from a thing or a person, but actually that help came through that person, but from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, um, you know, there's many derivatives of um, the root of this, uh, this, uh, this name. And the root is Noon, Saad, and Ra. And there's, the, the root appears 158 times in the Quran in, in lots of different forms. So examples of these forms are he helps, help or defend themselves, and Nasru, meaning the victory. Um, Nasirina, which means helpers. And so there's lots of derived forms of this, this word. And there's lots of different kinds of help as well. But this uh, word, the noun Nasr, means the help against an oppressor, help against someone who's overpowering you or something that's overpowering you. So there's lots of different kinds of help, but this uh, word used to mean help has a special meaning about it, which means against an oppressor or against someone wanting to overpower another person. Okay, and that um, is, is quite profound. So in Surah An-Nasr, when it talks about help coming, it means the help that came because there was lots of, um, obviously, oppressors and people against the Muslims and the believers. So that's why this term specifically was used of Nasr. And the term Nasrullah, in the surah Ida Ja'a Nasrullah is the help of Allah, and this help cannot be equaled to any other kind of help. SubhanAllah. So not only are you receiving victory or help against the oppressor, but you're receiving it from Allah. Nasrullah. Allah is an Nasir. He is the ultimate helper. He is the ultimate supporter and he is the ultimate defender of his believing slaves. Subhanallah. Now, there's, uh, there's lots of different types of victory or help. And I want to um, just talk briefly about the different types of victory that we may see or come across. Okay, so the scholars describe um, three types. So the first type of victory is that which is deserved. Okay, that which is deserved. So it comes with a price. And that price may be that you have to believe or there has to be some form of preparation for that victory. Right, so example, the victory um, of... Uh, the help of victory of Allah, um, sorry, the victory of worthiness of the Sahaba at the Battle of Badr, right? So they sacrificed and they were prepared and then they were made victorious, right? This is the type of vi victory for the believer who obeys Allah Azza wa Jal and then gains this victory. The second time of, uh, type of victory is that which is the opposite. It's not deserved by faith or obedient believer. But what Allah Azza wa Jal decrees is that they are victorious according to his wisdom in a certain situation. And therefore it's not up to us to judge that victory. So it may look like, oh, how come they're victorious? You know, they, they're not believing or they're not being obedient. But Allah himself decrees that victory with his wisdom in that situation. And only Allah knows best why. But what we do know is that that victory may be on a temporary level, 
meaning they may be victorious in this dunya, in this temporary life, in this near life, in the current life. But we know that for someone that hasn't declared faith or is not obedient to Allah, they will not have a long lasting victory. Now, the third type of victory is the principal victory, which might not be seen as victory by others. But in reality, it indicates true victory of a human being. So, for example, the um, example that they gave was the hairdresser of the uh, daughter, Fir'aun, of whom her children and herself were thrown in boiling oil. Subhanallah, na'ud billah. How were they victorious? How were they victorious? Does anybody know of this story? They were victorious because they stood by their belief in Allah Azza wa Jal. Right? And so although it looked like they weren't victorious, they were being um, traumatized and you know abused and hurt they gained the ultimate victory which is the pleasure and reward of an nasir because they attained the victory of becoming a martyr with the highest level of paradise so this victory may not be seen by others but in reality it, there is a true victory of a human being. And so this can be difficult to appreciate. But know that when we have believed and we stood, when we stand firm in our belief in Allah Azza wa Jal, we will gain the ultimate victory. Now, what's really interesting is that the, this, this name, uh, this attribute of, of Nasr, that the meaning comes from help and victory against those who oppress us. When we call upon Allah, when we are feeling oppressed, when we are feeling hard done by, when we are feeling overcome by a people or a situation, Know that calling upon this name of Allah is very specific to that problem. So how can we live by this name? One of the first ways we can live by this name is trusting in Allah. Living by this name. Don't become lazy or get frustrated. And imagine that Allah will not help you or not, will not make you victorious. Never mistrust Allah or become hasty. Right? To deserve the help of an nasir you must strongly believe in him and his attributes. And I want you to remember of um, the story from Musa alayhi salam and take inspiration from him when uh, Musa alayhi salam was being chased and he came to, to, to the water and basically when the two companies saw one another, the companions of Musa alayhi salam said, indeed we are to be overtaken. And Musa alayhi salam replied, no, indeed with me is my Lord. He will guide me. So in Surah, and that's from Surah Ash, Ash, um, it's from Surah number 26, um, in Ayah number 61 and 62, Musa alayhi salam had this firm belief and he said, Qala kalla inna ma'ya rabbi. Indeed, with me is my Lord. He will guide me. It's about having that trust that oh, Allah will guide me. Allah will make me victorious. Allah will help me. Allah will defend me. 
So trusting in that name, believing in that name, calling upon Allah using that name, and also relying on him and him alone. Never think that you were helped in a certain situation because somebody else came along and it was because of that person. Or never think that you were helped in a situation because of your own right decision or your own skill. You know, what we fall into the trap of, and especially in the personal development world, you know, there's this whole emphasis on, on, on saying, I, you know, I can do this and I've got this and, you know, I can achieve whatever I want. And yes, although we should have uh, self-belief and that resilience, as Muslims, as believers, my sisters, we have to trust that our success can only and does only come from Allah. So yes, I believe in myself because I have a Nasir on my side. You know, I succeeded and I'm victorious, not because, you know, um, of any skill that I had or because I made the right choice. It's because ultimately it came from a Nasir. And so rather divert that, um, that, Attribute to Allah, knowing that Allah is our helper and all success comes from him and him alone. Okay. And um, the other thing was that the other thing that we can do is I want to share with you the Surah of An-Nasr because there's so many lessons to learn from this. Okay, and I want to share with you the translation. So as you can see, when the victory of Allah has come and the conquest, and you see the people entering into the religion of Allah in multitudes, in droves, then exalt him with praise of your Lord, and ask forgiveness of him. Indeed, he is ever accepting of repentance. Now, I thought that was a really powerful reminder to end on, especially as we are in the month of Dhul Hijjah, these blessed days, where we know that we should be upping our good deeds, upping our ibadah because there's so many blessings in it. Now, when this um, surah was revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what Aisha radiallahu anha witnessed was that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam increased in seeking istighfar. Can you believe that? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam increased in his seeking istighfar. He increased the volume of his adhkar. And Aisha radiallahu anha, um, anha was very curious, like, how come? You know, you didn't used to read these duas like this. And he said, this is the command of my Lord. This is what I have been commanded to do. And he was re referring to this dua. So we may be asking Allah for victory, but whilst we are waiting for that victory to come, what can we be doing? Not just becoming impatient, waiting for that victory. When will it come? Why doesn't it happen? Allah commands us, then exalt him with praise of your Lord and ask forgiveness of him. Indeed, he is ever accepting of repentance. Hasabbih bihamdi rabbik. So praise your Lord. You know, Again, in, in this society, it's almost like when we become victorious, we need to celebrate. And there's nothing wrong with celebrating. Of course, you know, when we are victorious in anything we do, it, it's, yes, they're celebrating. But there is a very um, humble nature of the deen. And there was a very humble nature of the Prophet ﷺ that we can all learn upon. 
that when he was made victorious, he increased praising Allah and he increased in his seeking forgiveness. So whilst we are waiting for victory and whilst we may see victory happen for us, let us not forget to praise Allah to seek forgiveness of Allah and to turn back to him in repentance because he is ever accepting of repentance. And sometimes when we are in a difficult situation, my sisters, sometimes our behavior may not be the best. You know, we almost become arrogant or boastful that, you know, they're oppressing me. I've got the upper hand. I'm better than them. They're the ones that are, you know, in the wrong. I'm in the right. I'm going to ask for Allah's help. And there can be this, this almost um, haughty characteristic that we may fall prey to. That, you know, oh, you know, they're oppressing me. They're in the wrong. And, you know, we want to always, as Muslims, humble ourselves. You know, this is, this is from the sunnah. And so be patient when waiting for your victory. Don't let it tarnish your character, my sisters. Be gracious if you are in difficulty. Be humble. There is great beauty in it. And so what I would remind myself and all of you to do is increase in your praise of Allah and increase in your istighfar. And subhanAllah, I know I go on about this all the time, but the morning and evening of kar are a beautiful, beautiful way to remember as a daily habit to praise Allah. Right? It's, it's a beautiful habit. So remember. Subhanallah wa bihamdi, a hundred times a day in the morning and evening. Remember to say astaghfirullah wa tubu ilayh. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was no, known to do this from 70 to up to a hundred times every day and he was the Prophet. When he knew that he was going to get victory, when he had seen the people become, you know, the deen of Islam become victorious, he sought more forgiveness. And also what I would like to remind you, my sisters, is um, another dua from the morning and evening azkar, which uses this attribute of victory and help. Now, you may already be familiar with it, but, you know, it comforts me and comes to my aid every time I recite it. And I want to share it with you, inshallah. Um, and the dua is Bismillah. Um, hang on, I will share the screen with you so you can see the screen. Uh, oh, sorry. So, inshallah, you can see my screen now. Oops. Oops. Where's the dua? There we are. Okay. So I hope you can see my screen now. So this dua is so beautiful and it uses this word of Nasr, this attribute. Asbahna wa asbah al mulku lillahi rabbil alameen. Allahumma inni as'aluka khayra hadha al yawm. فتحه ونصره ونوره وبركته وهداه وأعوذ بك من شر ما فيه وشر ما بعده. We have started a new day, and with it all dominion is Allah's, Lord of all being. O oh Allah, I ask you for the good in this day, its victory, its help, its light its blessings and its guidance. 
I take refuge in you from the evil that is in it and from the evil that follows it. So that there is a morning version and an evening version of that same dua. And again, it's asking Allah for the victory. And you know, when you know and you trust the victory will come. It will come because it's a promise of Allah. It's an attribute of Allah. One of the things that Allah blesses you with is a tranquility and satisfaction in your heart. And so therefore, the reminder in the side of this booklet is that in this world, we should find in the remembrance of Allah, praising him and worshipping him, a delight that is incomparable to anything else. Allah says in Surah Ar-Rad, أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَتْمَعِنَّ الْقُلُوبِ Behold, indeed, in the remembrance of Allah, do hearts find tranquility and satisfaction. So my sisters, when you remember that help will come from Allah, it does come from Allah. When you remember that, then you, you won't stress. You won't, you know, have this anxiety, have this worry, have this concern, because you know, be patient, that Allah fulfills his promise and victory will be yours. Subhanallah. So that's where I want to end. And I hope that you have got certain takeaways from reflecting on this name. And I, I hope and I pray that it will come to aid your situation, whatever situation you find yourself in. Never give up and know that all help and victory ultimately comes from an Nasir. So on that note, my sisters, I will end it here for today. Any mistakes that I have made have come from me and my own shortcomings, and I ask Allah to forgive me, and I ask you all to forgive me. Any goodness that have, has come from this session is for sure from Allah, and may Allah accept it from all of us. May we use these final days of Dhul Hijjah to increase ourselves in the remembrance of Allah, to increase ourselves in praising Him, in glorifying Him, and seeking forgiveness from Him, and turning back to Him. And I pray that Allah grants us all victory in this dunya and the akhirah. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Wal asr. Inna al insana la fi khusr. Illa al ladhina amanu wa amilu salihati wa tawasaw bil haq. وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد والله إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته